Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I wanna to show you how to create an interactive brochure with animated infographics in Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create a multi-state object, add buttons, animation, as well as publish online. So let's get started. All right, so before we get started, I wanna show you a preview of how this will look like by the end of the lesson. I'm gonna take you through a couple examples here of how I set up the interactivity on some of the infographics, as well as show you how I set up a slider page at the end. So user age groups, basically I have three uh, years here that I've turned into buttons, fast facts, I have two arrows up and down to toggle through, quarterly breakdown, Q1, Q2, Q3 with an animation, the pie chart is also changing there, and I'm gonna show you how to set up this cool slide page where you can open it and then close it. I have a little fade transition there. Um, you can have a hard transition. Well, I'll, I'll go through that as well. So let's get started. I have another layout down below. We're basically going to be focusing on this right-hand page here. Um, there's not gonna be any, any animation on this left side page. So in my CC libraries, I went ahead and added some of the charts, the graphs that we'll be using in this lesson. I'm gonna drop a link in the description below on how to create these in Illustrator. I covered that in a previous tutorial, which may help you before you go ahead and do this one here. So as a first step, I'm gonna grab the rectangle frame tool and just cover the entire page here. Just create a rectangle that covers the entire right side page. And I'm just gonna tear off this entire panel. These are the panels that we'll be needing and I'll, I'll go through that in just a moment. Um, but I went ahead and created a color group here, a theme for this, this design. And I want that, that blue color there. And I'm just gonna drop an image right into that. It's a shot of uh, a city, buildings. And I wanna to go to my properties panel, click on the donut or the content grabber. And then in the appearance under the opacity dropdown, click normal for the blending modes and select overlay. You could play around with the blending modes and see what works best for your, your specific design. And I want to change the opacity to about 20%, just so you get a subtle blending mode there. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this background so it's not, um, it doesn't get in our way as we're working here. Perfect, now I can start adding the graphs and the charts to this. Um, and I went ahead and put them in my CC libraries. So I'm gonna grab one, hold my shift key down and click three. I'm gonna bring them all in together and drop them in all together. I'm just gonna click, click, and click. And you can see they're in the order in my layers panel. So you can see one, two, and then three is at the in the far right. Reason I'm showing you that is you want to stack them in your layers panel um, the way that you want them to appear as you are clicking those buttons once we set that up. So it's important to have bar graph one, bar graph two, and then bar graph three in that order. I'm going to highlight all three and use my um, alignment panels or my alignment tools here. So I'm gonna align the horizontal and the vertical centers here. I'll make sure that you're aligned to the selection and then position them where you want. So I wanna put them maybe, I know I created some guides here. I may go against that. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, the title in first. That might help me as well. So let me grab the text the type tool and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag out a frame there and this is gonna be called 2021 uh, fast I oh know facts and figures 2021 facts and figures I also went ahead and added paragraph and character styles to this and so this is going to be um, this will be category headline uh, no main headline there perfect and the font that I'm using for this is Carla. And so it's just a combination of the weights throughout. It's a cool font and I believe it's a Google font if you wanna find it. 
Perfect, so I'm going to maybe move this down a bit, maybe have that sit on that line for now. And let me just reference my layout up top just so I know what I'm doing here. So user age groups, and I'm going to go ahead and just type that user age groups. And this is charts headline, perfect. I'm just gonna double click that and center it to my graphs here. And the ages I have here, or sorry, the the years is 2015, 2018, and 2020. So let me zoom in close here and I can type those in. So we got 2018 or 15. Let's change that to uh, Carla Bold and let's make that white. And what I'll do here is just copy. I'll just make copies of the others and change this to 18. And change this to 2020. Perfect. And then I'll center them to my graph, the bar graph, just so I know. I also want to, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and create these into outlines. This way I can add a rollover appearance effect once we set them up as buttons as well. So let me go ahead and do that. And to do that, you just go up to object, or I'm sorry, type and create outlines. So you can see now these are not editable text pieces anymore. Um, so make sure that you've done all that beforehand uh, before you created it into outlines, okay? Perfect, so what I'm gonna do now is let me group these as well for now. Group all these elements together and let's align the vertical centers there just so we know everything is centered. That's important. And then here, what I'll do is I'm just gonna copy this last bit here. It's basically the ages to go under each graph. And it looks like my graphs are off. They don't, I shouldn't have centered them. See, I shouldn't have centered the vertical centers. I need the bottoms to align. So I wanna align the bottom edges, okay? So make sure that the line at the bottom of the, the bar graph um, are all aligned at the bottom, okay? Let me just move all this stuff up a little bit here. Perfect. Actually, I'm gonna leave a little bit of space because one of the bar graph pieces may run into the year, so I just wanna leave a little room there. And then we can always revert back if we need to. Okay, so that's set up. The next one we'll do are the fast facts. And for this, I'm just going to copy that right over and type in fast facts. And for this, I also have the copy set up here. So what I'll do is I'll bring it in and then um, kind of put it together from there. So let me just bring it in together as one block. Okay. And for this, I have a paragraph style as well, which will be fast, I'm sh I think it's fast facts. Or, I know infographic text, perfect. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll grab the first one and I'll draw out a text frame, a separate text frame and paste that in. And this top piece here, the 1.2 uh, million, that will be fast facts header. Just wanna make sure I didn't, yeah, I had it in a separate. So let me do that. I'm gonna put it in a separate text frame. Perfect, and I'll bring this down. Let's put this over here. And what I'll do is I'll group those. And before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and copy two more just so I can add the text into those elements. Command G or object group to group them. Okay, I'm just going to move that down a bit. Actually, let's leave it just how it is. Good. 
So this one will be 4.1 million. And of course, all this, all these, um, you know, information bits were just things I, I came up with. So it's all, it's all fictional, but, um, yeah, you can, you can actually come up with your own, own information as well, which might be helpful to you. So that's total revenue. And the last one is 35%, 35%. Good. And I'll just copy that last bit. So that last bit is about increase in users. Perfect. So I can get rid of this one now. So that one's grouped. Let's group this one. And we'll group the last set here. We just want to make sure that there's no overset text there. Good. And much like I did with the bar graphs, I'm going to click each one. I'm going to click one, hold shift and click the others, and then align the horizontal and vertical centers. I know that kind of threw things off there. Um, we can position it something like that. Let's just make sure that these are also centered and move it. Something like that is good. This will all make sense once we set up the interactivity because we're gonna be using object states to, um, to set up um, the buttons as well. So you can see in my layers panel here, these are set up as group, group, group. So we have to rename these as well. So one point, um, let's start with the top one here. So 35%, actually I do wanna rearrange these. So let's move this one up top and this one in the middle. So now I should have 1.2 million is first, followed by 4.1 million, followed by 35%, okay? So let's go ahead and rename this first group, Fast Fact One. Turn that off, click on the second one, and this will be called Fast Fact Two. Turn that one off, and the last one will be Fast Fact three okay now you can turn them back on because they're renamed and that is good perfect and so we'll need to bring in the buttons that we will need to um, toggle through these three fast facts and in order to do that again i'm just going to go to my um, cc libraries and i'm going to drag one over is fine and just click in there i can just make another copy and then just rotate it when you're rotating, hold your shift key and that will constrain it to the degrees. You see it's a lot easier to get to zero degrees to flip it around. Okay, and then you can position it maybe somewhere in the middle here. You can see that that's the center point. Maybe leave a little bit of space. And you know what, I'll move that up just a bit just to give it a little bit more space in between the two buttons. And now let's bring it back down, perfect. So those will be the buttons to toggle through the fast facts. And let's bring in, as a last step here, let's bring in the last bit, which will be um, quarterly breakdown, okay? So the quarterly breakdown will be the three pie charts. So I'm gonna bring those in first. And you can see I have them in my CC library. I'm gonna drag them over. And much like I did with the bar graph, I'm just gonna do three clicks to bring them in, one, two, three. And just as an example here, you could see they're, they're labeled group because they're grouped, so I'm gonna have to rename them again, okay? So it's basically going to go from 38% to 20% to 75%. So I'm gonna click that first one, bring it to the top and rename it, 38%. Uh, 38% graph, maybe that'll be easy. Click the second one, and this one is 20% graph. And I'm gonna click the third one, and that will be 75% graph. And 
as I've mentioned before, renaming these things in your layers panel and then eventually renaming them with the buttons and the object states just makes it easier when you're setting up your interactive elements. Okay, so I'm gonna select all three, align the center and horizontal, vertical and horizontal centers, and then maybe position it here. So you can see 38% first, followed by 20, followed by 75. So they're in the order that I want. And for this, I'm just gonna take a look here. I have, um, okay, so I need to bring in quarter, let me just bring in the headline here. Actually, I'll bring in the, the Q1, Q2, and Q3 as well. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna copy this as well. I'm just gonna paste it exactly where I have it here. And so I'll bring I'll bring these elements up right to that edge. And now I'm going to add the percentages, which will set up as well to come in with a fly in from right animation preset. So let's do 20%. And let's see if I have a, yes, I believe I do. It's called percentages, uh, percent figures, good. And I'll just create a copy, two more copies. And so let's do this one will be 38, this one will be 20, and the last one will be 75, perfect. So the percentage figures are now grouped with the pie charts as you can see in my layers panel as I turn them on and off individually. I also want to add a down button at the top of the page. I'm going to increase the size of it, center it right to the page and maybe move it up so it's right on that margin. I'm going to create another copy and I'm going to bring it down to the bottom of the page. Just rotate it the other way, center it to the page, and have it sit right on that margin. And so essentially the bottom one will open the slide page and the top one will close it. So now that I've set up all the content on this page, it's time to move on to the next step and show you how to add interactivity. Okay, so for the next step, we're gonna need three panels to work with. Buttons and forms, object states, and animation. You can access all of them by going to Window, Interactive, and there's Animation, there's Buttons and Forms, and there's Object States. So once you open them up, try to group them together in the same window so it's easier to work. I'm going to start with these three bar graphs here. I'm going to select all three with my Selection tool. And the first step is creating this into a multi-state object. I'm going to open the Object States. Go down to the bottom where it says convert selection into multi-state object. Click that and you can see bar, bar graph one, two, and three. And just by me clicking through them, you can see that the bar graphs are changing as I'm going through. I do want to change the name of the object. So let's call this bar graph um, set. Okay, bar graph set works, that's fine. And now I can go ahead and focus on turning these top years into buttons to trigger each state. So I'm just gonna ungroup them. I'm gonna click on 2015. And let's go ahead and turn that into a button. And this will be called 2015 button. I'm gonna call it 2015 button two. And the action is going to be go to a state. And there's our object, our multi-state object that we've set up. So bar graph set. It's only one we have so far, so that one works. And we do want this to go to bar graph one. Now I do want to set up a rollover appearance state on these, and that's why I went ahead and turned these into create outlines, an outline mode instead of actual text. This will allow us to do that. So I'm going to click on rollover and then double click to drive into 2015. And in my swatches panel, you can go ahead and maybe pick another color. So let's go with that, that red color that I'm pulling from the actual graph. So you can see when I roll over it, it's going to turn that, um, that red color there. Perfect. So that one's set. Let's click on 2018. Turn that into a button. 
this will be 2018 button two. Only reason I'm adding the two is because I've already created a button in the previous layout and I just don't want any confusion. Um, the event will be on release or tap. The action will be go to state and the state will be bar graph two. Let's click rollover, double click. You have to double click to drive into the rollover appearance part of it. And that's when you can go in and change the color. Okay. And so you can always click back on normal and then roll over, normal, roll over. Okay. And let's go and do the last one here. Button 2020 button two. And let's set a go to state. And this one will be bar graph three. Click on rollover, double click on 2020 to drive into the rollover appearance part of it, and then change it to the red color and then go back to um, none or go back to normal. Okay. So you can see the appearance uh, for that last one is set as well. So let's go ahead and test this out. The first one, the first infographic has been set up. So we set up the buttons to trigger the multi-state object. Okay. So let's give it a try. You can see the rollover works. That works just fine. 2018, 2020, 18, 15. Okay. So that, that one is working just fine. So let's move on to the second one. Now the second one is set up similar, only there's a, there's a different uh, action that you're, you're applying to the trigger uh, for the button. So, but first let's select all three of these and create it into a multi-state object. Fast fact one, fast fact two, fast fact three. So you could see the fact that I renamed them, that, that, that naming convention carries over to the multi-state object as well. And they are in the order that I've set them up as well. So this one will be called fast facts set two. Okay. And now what we can, what we can do now is focus on these up and down arrow buttons. Okay. So let's start with maybe let's start with the down arrow. Cause that will be the next button and let's go ahead and create that or convert it into a button. And this will be called down arrow button. Let's call it fast facts down arrow button or down arrow is fine too. The action now, instead of go to state, you're just going to have it go to the next state. Okay. This way it'll keep going through that next state. You also have an option of having it stop at the very last state. This forces the user to toggle back up, or you could just have it keep looping throughout. So that's user uh, preference or pre personal preference, I should say. Uh, I, I'll leave it unchecked for now, but just know that that that's an option for you. I'm going to click on the, the up arrow and let's click on type. This will be a button and this will be fast facts up arrow. And this will also be go to previous state. So the first one takes you to the next state. This one will be previous state. And again, you have the option of having it stop, but I'm just going to leave it so it loops right through. Okay. And again, let's test that out to make sure that that is set up correctly as well. Previewing your work is important because then you can go back. Okay. So see, that's what I mean. I, I set it up to user group, so I didn't change the multi-state. So let's click this first one. And I want to set it to fast facts set two. That's a step that I missed. Okay. So right now I had those buttons set up to go to the bar graph. That's why it's important to check your work. I'm going to click that last one. And we're just changing the multi-state object from bar graph set to fast facts set two. Now let me test that out and it should trigger. It will trigger, trigger the actual uh, fast facts that we set up. So let's go down. And we can go back up. Perfect. Now I'd go back and clean it up. So it's aligned. You can see there's a little bit of a, um, 
it shifts a little bit and I, I wouldn't be happy with that. I'd go back and align everything, but you get the sense, you get the idea of how that works. Let's go ahead and do the last one. Now this Q1, Q2, Q3 will also be set up the same way as the user group. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click, well, let's set these up as a multi-state, the third multi-state object in this layout. So the, the pie charts, let's go to objects, states, and turn that into a multi-state object. And you can see again, they're in the order that I want, 38, 20, 75. Let's call this quarterly. Let's just call it quarterly breakdown, okay? And that works. I'm gonna click on Q1. And in the buttons and forms panel, all these have already been set up. So let me just go ahead and convert these back to objects so I can show you how that works. So Q1, change that into a button. And this will be Q1 button. The action will be go to a state. Make sure that you're always checking which uh, object state you're, you're directing this to. You can see the more object states you're, you're building, um, the easier it is that you might pick the wrong one or forget to select one. So quarterly breakdown, and we do want this to go to 38%. You could set up a rollover on these as well. Why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm going to click rollover, double click to drive into that and select the red, go back to normal. Let's click quarter Q2. So that one's set up. Let's click Q2, convert that to a button and this will be Q2 button. The action here will be go to state. The object will be quarterly breakdown. The state will be 20%. Let's click rollover, double click Q2, and then change it to the red. And let's go back. Q3 button. Let's call it that Q3 button. The action will be go to state. Let's change it to quarterly breakdown. And then let's change that to 75%. Let's click rollover, double click, swatches, red, and then click normal to go back to the normal appearance. So again, let's, let's go ahead and test these out. As a last step, I'm gonna have the figure, the actual percentage come in as a fly-in from right animation. So I wanna make sure that they work first. So there's 38, there's 20, there's 75. So certainly you could leave this in as is, but I want, I want the figure to come in as a preset fly in from right. So let's do that. Let's start with 38. I'm going to double click just, just to have the 38% selected. And then in your animations panel, go ahead and select, well, you could select a preset that you want. I find that fly in from right as I'm clicking that. Um, and you can see the event automatically uh, is set to on state load. So when I click Q1, 38% will come in. When I click Q2, I'll set that up in a second. The same thing will happen. Now the duration's a little long. I want it to come in fairly quick. So let's try 0 0.5. And I don't want it to fade in. So I just want a, you know, a hard transition from the right. Let's move on to the next one. So that one's set. You're gonna have to go to object states and then click the second one. Double click 20%, go to animation. We want fly in from right with a half second duration and no fade in. Go to object states, click 75%, double click the actual percentage. The preset will be fly in from right and the duration will be 0.5 with no fade in. Perfect, so I'm gonna test all three of these interactive infographics or animated infographics out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the EPUB preview window one more time. So you can see the user groups, the bar graphs work, the fast facts 
we can toggle up, we can toggle down. The Q1, we have that rollover appearance state as well. There's 38%, there's 20, and there's 75. So as a last step, I'm gonna show you how to add a cool slider page animation to open an additional page on, on a layout and then close it as well. So we'll do that next. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to add an additional page to a layout. So let's just say these two pages were related and instead of putting it on a separate page, you can contain it as an animation here on this infographics page. So the page to the right here, I want to essentially place over top of the other page layout. And the only things that I want to be in front of this page are those arrows. So you could see in my, you could see in my layout in my layers panel here, the, this arrow here, which is called path is on top. So I've got path, path. Those are the two arrows. And this is just a page number and there's slider group. So you want to make sure that the arrows are on top so that once the animated page comes up, you'll be able to still see the arrow and then click it to close. So just make note of that, that it's important to have those arrows at the very front of the layout, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is actually add a custom motion path to this layout so we can have a little bit more control as we set up the animation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag out a guide here. And with this guide, you can see I have it just set up on the page there. I want to have that centered to the page. So I'm going to highlight the guide and in my properties panel here, I want to align it to the page. I want to align the vertical center right into the center of the page. And I'll show you why in a sec. So I'm just going to move this over here. I'm going to grab the line tool and on this guide here, I'm going to start and I'm going to hold my shift key and draw a line to the top of the page. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna hold my shift key and then drag out a line that goes right to the top of the page. And we can adjust this line after we turn it into a motion path. It's still selected. So with my selection tool, I'm gonna hold my shift key. My line is still selected. I'm gonna hold my shift key and then click on the secondary page, which will become the slider page. With the slider page, you have to make sure that everything in the layout is grouped together. This way, when it animates up and it animates down, everything comes in, uh, comes in to, to the page as a group and, and you can close it as a group as well. So what I'll do now is go into my animation panel and I'm gonna tear that one off. And let's go ahead and down below here, do you see, typically you would choose a preset for this, but we want to add a convert to motion path. So having that line with another object grouped together or selected together, and then by clicking that, what you've done is you've created this, this, this path uh, for the object. I'm gonna move this animation panel back. And basically we can, we can adjust the line if we need to. That's why we set up that guide. What I wanna do now is while holding shift again, so you're not, um, shifting every anything to the right or the left and keeping it constrained is just drag the entire layout down right off the page right to the bottom okay and you can see there's the motion path which i can click now that i have it clicked i'm going to drag it right up top to that um that guide that i set up okay now that that is set up okay and I should go ahead and give this, well, it's called slider group. So that's the name of the animation. And you can see in the preset, it's custom. So I've set up that custom um, animation. Now what I wanna do is have these buttons set up to open and close that slider. So let's click the first one down at the bottom. And in the buttons and forms panel, let's go ahead and click that. I'm going to convert that into a button and this one will be called open slider page arrow and the action will be animation. And you can see in the animation, 
it gives you every option that's animated on the page. So there are the selections for the percentage, the quarterly breakdown, but at the bottom, you see the slider group. The option, we want this to play. So we want it to open essentially. Let's move up to the top. Actually, is there maybe one other thing that we want to do here? Nope, I think we're good. Let's move up to the top. Click the close, what will become the close button. So convert that to a button. And then we'll call this close. Um, this will be close slider page group. Okay, and let's give this an action of animation again. And the animation will be slider group, but the option, instead of having it play, you want to reverse. You want to have the animation reversed. So let me show you how that looks in the EPUB preview. And then we can publish this online and take a look uh, how it, it presents or how it views in a web browser. Okay, so you saw that came in on page load. There's one thing we have to do, but let's test it out. I can close it and I can open it. Now it's pretty slow. I want to speed that up and I don't want to have that uh, come in on page load. So let's scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to click it. Let's open the animation panel. And you see here in events, it's, it says on page load and on release. So I want to click that and uncheck on page load. I just want this to have a button event as you can see down below. And the duration, let's speed that up also to maybe 0.5 seconds. Good. And let's test it out now. So I can open it, have a look at some other content here, and then I can close it and go back to my original page and keep reading. Okay, so to publish online, I'm just going to go up to the upper right hand corner and click the share button and then select publish online. That'll bring up another window where you can add a title, description, and then your publishing options, whether that be the entire document, all pages, or select a range. Once you've set all that up, you can hit publish. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already gone ahead and published it. So here's how it looks in my web browser. Let me just go ahead and go to full screen view and let's test these out. So you can see the hover appearance or the rollover appearance works here. Let's click 2018, 2020. Those work great. Let's go to the next for fast facts and toggle down and then I can toggle back up. Let's go to quarterly breakdown. The hover appearance works there. So Q1, Q2, Q3. And then as the last step, let's open that slide page and let's close that slide page. So that's how you create an interactive brochure with animated infographics in Adobe InDesign. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new videos have been posted. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design or InDesign in general, Go ahead and click the playlist above.